Hello everybody and welcome to the session Automating Your Way to Greatness with the ADC Nitro API. My name is Mick Hilworst, I'm a Citrix Consultant at Lockin Consultants and today I would be happy to show you how to start out with the Nitro API and the Python SDK that comes with it. This session is meant for programmers, system administrators, network engineers or just anybody trying to wrap their head around automating with the Nitro API. So on our agenda for today, first I'm going to show you the software and the versions that come with that I'm using. Uh, just to give you a point of reference, you don't need to mirror the setup at all, you can use anything you like. And then we'll be setting up the actual Nitro SDK for Python. Um, and when that's set and done, we'll do some actual coding together. Um, I'll show you some examples, uh, it will be quite fun. Um, normally I would also like to integrate this code with other libraries available for Python, but we're a little bit short on time today, so I can't really do that right now with some great examples. Uh, but I will show you some of the things I've made in the past, so you will get any idea uh, on what's possible. Um, then you probably want to continue your own development journey from there on, um, get some things going for yourself. Uh, I'll be giving you some pointers for the documentation and demos you can use, uh, which will be great insights on how the SDK works. All right, so I'm on Python version 3.8. Um, I'm a little bit behind already. If you use 3.9, that's also fine. Um, Nitro API SDK version 13. Uh, please keep in mind that your ADC should correlate with the version of the SDK you are using. Um, if you're on uh, ADC version 12, also make sure you're using SDK version 12. If you download the SDK from the ADC directly, the version will always be the proper one. I'm also using PyCharm uh, as my IDE. You can use any IDE you like, uh, it's just the one I have. Let's get started right away. All right, so as you can see, I'm currently locked into the ADC web interface. Um, please keep in mind what I said earlier about your ADC version needing to be the same as your SDK version. If you look at the top right side, you will see your own username here. You can press it and you will see what the release you're currently on. I'm on version 13, so I'll be using SDK version 13. If you're on 12 or uh, anything of the likes, should be fine as well. Um, please keep in mind that the oldest release that has an SDK version top of my head is uh, 9.2. If we head over to the downloads tab over here, and then we can see that on the right hand side we have Nitro and then you have Nitro API SDK for Python. So if you press that, a teach set file will download, please unpack that somewhere and then head over your, to your uh, bash terminal um, or your Python terminal. Um, I'm going to do so right now. And then in here just proceed to your folder. So this is the unpacked folder for me. And if I look in here with the dir command, I can see that there is a setup.py file. So uh, this is to uh, just install the SDK on your uh, machine. Just press or type in Python and then setup.py and then just give the install command. Now, if you hit enter, it will start running and it will start installing the whole SDK. It takes quite a while, so I'm not gonna do it. It's already installed for me. And then um, I'll just for now cut back to the actual coding. So here we are at the actual IDE. I hope everything went well with the SDK. You might wonder why do we use the SDK because the API is also usable with GET and POST requests. Um, the reason we use the SDK is because there's already a lot of predefined functions in there that would save us quite some development time. Um, well, we have quite a bit of work to do, so I'm just gonna start right away. The first thing we want to do is uh, create an import and uh, the imports are quite lengthy. So bear with me here for a second. We're going to import from nssrc.com.citrix.netscaler.nitro.service.nitro underscore service. And then it starts with the actual import and we're going to import nitro underscore service. So what is nitro underscore service going to do for us? It's going to help us establish an actual connection to the ADC. We're going to work with a try and accept uh, style of command here because, um, well, of course, you can make the code shorter by just logging in directly. But we would also know to know, we would also need to know why uh, something went wrong or if we actually logged in correctly. We want some kind of logging in there. So I'm going to start with a try and I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call it an accession. 
and that's gonna equal the nitro underscore service. And then this is a function that we're actually using. So um, it's gonna request two variables from us. And the first one is gonna be the IP that you want to log into. So for me, this is the Netscaler IP I use for my test uh, uh, Netscaler. I'm, I'm sorry, I should ADC, not Netscaler, but it's, it's the same thing. So it's a, uh, uh, and then we're gonna use the actual protocol. You can also use HTTPS here because I'm in my test environment, I can use HTTP. Uh, please keep in mind that this is not secure. Um, also keep in mind if you use HTTPS but your certificate is invalid or something uh, funny is going on with your security there, um, you're gonna need to use some extra code to actually accept the session being over HTTPS and being uh, unsecure. So if you want to do that, uh, look up some more of the code in the uh, Citrix development docs. So now we established uh, uh, a session as a variable and we're going to tell it to connect to this IP. Of course, it's still going to need a username and a password. So we're going we're gonna to call it and we're going to press a dot. And then we got a couple of commands we can use here. Um, and we're going to say a login. So that's what we want to use. Uh, you probably didn't see the context menu just popped up because it's uh, part of my screen recording, but it uh, gave me a couple of options. But just uh, enter the dot login if you uh, if you need to. Um, so for me, uh, the first argument is going to be my username, and the second argument is going to be my password, and the third argument is going to be the time to live. And this is the time to live for the session itself if it established successfully. So. Um, First one, username, second password, third is your time to live. All right, uh, so I wanna create an if statement now because if this uh, actually did log in, I want to know. Uh, so I'm gonna say if um, ns underscore session, and then this is great because there's also a function that's called uh, is login. Uh, I gotta use a capital here. And this is gonna uh, result in either a true or a false. Um, so I'm gonna say if it equals true, I want you to print a message and the message must be uh, success, exclamation mark. So this is the successful part of our code. Uh, and if it doesn't work, we want to have uh, some kind of uh, catch handling in there. So that's gonna look the except is gonna be for. So we're gonna create an exception, s error, and then we're gonna print just a string called error with a space and then we are going to concatenate that with a simple error dot arcs um, as a string so it's going to throw the actual uh, error for us as a string so um, this is a, the wrong password actually i'm going to do that on purpose and um, so if you run it right now it should throw the exception Ah, right, so the max retro error is something you can ignore, and uh, that's something that's happening with me. So if we run it again, like I said, max retro error, ignore that. It's gonna return us the invalid username or password, which is great, and if we're gonna use the proper password, which is NSRoot1, it's gonna return us with a success. So we know that we are right now, we are locked in and we are ready to do some actual coding in here. It's gonna be great. Okay, so with the session done, we can now create the actual uh, resource we want. So for the test, we're gonna create a load balancing, load balancing virtual server. Um, and as you can imagine, before we do so, we need to import uh, the actual load balance virtual server from the uh, uh, SDK again. So we're gonna just quickly start with the from, and then we're gonna create another lengthy entry dot citrix dot netscale dot nitro dot resource. And this is where it starts to differ. And, and then we go to config uh, and then LB for load balancing and then load balance virtual server. Then we're going to import and the import will be lbv server all right so i would like to create a function and this function will create a new uh, virtual server for me um low bands virtual server that is based on the use uh, on the uh, name i gave it and the ip i provided um so we can do some kind of small automation in that way um so to create a new function i'm gonna type def and i'm gonna call it new lbv server 
and I'm gonna give it three arguments. I want it to pass the NS session because it needs to know where it can create this resource. I'm gonna pass a name and I'm gonna pass an IP. So I'm gonna first just equal this to the NS session. It's gonna be called the same for clarity. And I'm gonna be giving it a variable called LB name and I'm gonna give it a variable called IP. All right, so again, we are gonna work with a try and catch uh, or try an exception that is. Um, so we're gonna create a try and then we are gonna create a new variable and we call it new LB fee server, which is the same in the Citrix documentation, by the way. Um, and then we are gonna call it LB, we're gonna define it as an LB fee server uh, entry. All right, so right now it knows that new LBV server underscore object is a uh, variable of LBV server. So we can uh, create a new LBV server as some kind of stencil. Um, so now we are just gonna provide all the data it needs. So it's gonna need a name and we're just gonna give it a string. I'm gonna add an F in front of the string so I can use an actual uh, um, argument in the string, uh, or I should say variable inside the string, and I'm gonna call the variable LB name. So it can just use that instead of uh, a, a fixed string. And then we will also create a new IP. IP, and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna just name it IP. So these arguments we have at the top will get parsed to the actual uh, name and IP. We can also make this a fixed string for anything. And like we're gonna do now, we're gonna give it a port and the port is gonna be uh, fixed on 88. Um, and we're gonna give it a service type. And the service type is uh, the actual protocol. We're gonna make it HTTP and then we're gonna add a uh, a low balancing method as well and we're gonna call this one around robin which you surely know all right um so right now it has all the data and then we want it to create the actual low balance virtual server so we're gonna tell it to uh, do so we're gonna call the lbv server with an at and then we are gonna provide also the ns session and we're gonna provide our new low balance virtual server object we just defined. All right, if that goes well, we want it to print a uh, server created, and then we are just gonna add the uh, server name that we just uh, created, dot name. So again, just this variable, very useful. Um, if it doesn't go well, something goes wrong, uh, resource already exists or something else is happening, we want it to throw an error. Uh, so we're gonna create a, another accept, just like we did before. I'm gonna call it error. And then I'm gonna say print, and then error on. And then I'm just gonna specify the function that it's called from, which is new LB server because right now we only have uh, a little bit of code but if your code expands and you have a lot of uh, try and accepts and you want to uh, know what uh, part of your code this accept is coming from it's way easier if you also define the function so I'm just gonna use that right now and then I'm gonna make it a string and the string is gonna be an error and an error is arcs so this should work uh, fine, but of course, nothing is happening right now because we only defined the function, we also actually need to call it. So we need to say, all right, um, if everything is going well, I want to actually create a new resource, um, but I don't want the resource to be created if the NS session isn't uh, working properly. So above, we already checked if the NS session uh, that is login equals true. So you will be able to parse this code under here, um, but uh, uh, because this function isn't created yet over that this part, it won't work. So I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty solution here. And I'm gonna say if NS session dot is login, just the same as before equals true, just so it checks again, just in case. Uh, then we are gonna create a new load balance virtual server so we're going to call the function here 
and then we're gonna pass the NS session and then we are gonna parse the actual name and I'm gonna call my new server load balancing underscore uh, test script and I'm gonna parse the IP as 192.168.176.119. So if I run this right now, it should actually create this virtual server for me. And if anything goes wrong, it should let me know what goes wrong. Let's go. All right, it's the max retry error again. This is because I'm already locked in. You can ignore that, we'll just do it again. And then you can see, um, success from the actual login and then it also lets me know that the server has been created so i'm gonna head over to our netscaler real quick and see if everything indeed is created okay we are back at the adc uh, web gui and when i go to traffic management and virtual servers you might need to refresh this because of uh, the new entry has been created needs to be refreshed um, and you can see that the lb underscore task has been created for us with our ip port protocol and our method now for the next uh, thing we're going to try, we want to do some actual automation. So uh, let's say we have uh, 100 servers and they all use the round robot load balancing method and we want to set them to um, least connection. Yeah. So we're just going to create it in our IDE real quick right now. All right, so we're back at the IDE again. Um, now we're going to create a function that will iterate through all the names of the uh, load balancing virtual servers. Um, because for the updating of an entry, we need to specify the name. Well, you can imagine that we need to automate the name uh, in some way, so it can do that for every uh, name available on the load balance virtual service tab. And then for every name available, it will update the load balancing method. Um, so before we can do that, I'm gonna comment out some of our old code, so it won't try and create this virtual server every time. And then I'm just gonna start with creating a new function I'm gonna call it update method and pass it ns session as a variable and then we're gonna start with a try again as always and we're gonna create a list of objects um, which is gonna be called servers and we're gonna tell the obv server that get method to provide us that information so server is gonna be uh, all the objects in the current NS session load balance virtual server. Now we need to extract the names of all these entries in here. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna create an empty uh, list. We're gonna call it server list. And then we're gonna create a for loop. So for each in the range of zero to the length of servers. So for all the entries in here, we are gonna append the uh, uh, entry of uh, to the server list and the entry we want to append is servers i dot name so it will provide the or we will populate the list with all the server names so now we can do the actual updating part so we're going to do another for loop for e in server list oh i made a small typo there we're gonna first declare this variable as a load balancing virtual server object. And then we're gonna update uh, the name. I'm sorry, we're not gonna update the name, we're gonna specify the name for the object to update. Uh, so we're gonna say this is equal to uh, i. And, and then, so this is the piece of code required to actually update the entry. First, we need to specify the name. This is the way it works. And then we can update what we actually want to update. So we're gonna update the uh, load balancing dot load balancing method, and we're gonna tell it needs to be a uh, least connection or round robin for that matter. Um, then we actually need to uh, uh, parse this to the ADC again. So we're gonna say uh, LBV server dot update, and we're gonna give it the NS session. And we're gonna say it needs to update the entry we just created. And then we also need to create an exception, of course. Um, so we're just gonna do that for the error rate control. And we're gonna say print string. We've done this a couple of times now, so I feel like I need to explain this less. Um, and just print the error in case there is one. 
So this should work actually. So we're just gonna call the, the, the function. So we're gonna say update methods and we're gonna say in a session. And now it should specify that every load balance virtual server will get the least connection load balancing method. Uh, it seems I missed a piece of code and I did. I'm sorry, this should be a string of course. Uh, the name server is not defined. That's because servers indeed does not exist. This is supposed to be servers. There we go. And there we have success. So let's switch over back to the Netscaler again. And on the Netscaler webpage, I can see that all the methods have been updated to a least connection. That's great. All right. Um, so I would like to continue with showing you some uh, something I made uh, so you get an idea what's possible with other Python libraries. Um, probably you will have a lot of fun with that. Uh, at least I hope so. And then we'll get back to the PowerPoint presentation uh, and just uh, give you some pointers for future reference. Actually, before we continue, uh, I just remembered that I forgot to tell you one small but important bit. If you have worked with ADCs before, then you will probably know whenever you restart one, any unsaved configuration changes are gone. Well, it's the same with the code we're using. Uh, and it just remembered that it didn't update or uh, save the actual configuration in the code. So if you want to use this in a production environment, you will for sure want to save whatever you did. And uh, so I'm just going to cover you quickly how you save because it's really easy. You're just going to call the NS session. And then on the NS session, you're just gonna call save config. That's all you need to do. Uh, but this will make will make sure that your code will be uh, remembered the second that the ADC is restarted. That can uh, save you some real trouble. So now we only scratched the tip of the iceberg uh, and I would love to do a lot more code examples with you, but sadly our session time is limited. Um, so I would like to discuss some examples with you. Um, so for example, just imagine that you want to create a new system and you could automate your backups entirely you could say i just want to back up my uh, create new backups uh, every x amount of time and then write into this specific folder um, or what's always hard to do is when you work with uh, app qoe is that you want to create a baseline of numbers for your actual throttling um, but that's that's quite hard to do and you need a lot of data for that to do it properly so you could write a system that automatically uh, collects all these numbers and just creates a baseline for you so you just need to open up your report and it's all set up and done um, I've also been working on something myself which is what you see in the screen right now uh, it's a toolkit I'm creating the purpose of the toolkit is to uh, create a list of virtual servers running on your ADC and then forward this list to uh, SSL labs. So SSL labs can generate a lot of reports for you with uh, security vulnerabilities you have on your internet facing uh, virtual servers. And then you could automatically fix these vulnerabilities through the toolkit. So you wouldn't need to write your own code or uh, press anything in the GUI. You could just press a button and it will fix it based on whatever is broken. Um, that function isn't quite done yet. I must admit that. Uh, but I can show you something that I have up and running right now in this GUI, which is just a simple reporting tool I've been using. Um, so if I just want to log in. And this is the same as what we did in the initial phase of setting up our connection. I just hope it goes well because I've been logging in multiple times. So it's probably uh, hanging for a second. But that's, that's normal. Yeah, so that's just the uh, max retryer. You can ignore that always happens when I'm showing off code that it's uh, not working properly. So imagine here I want to create a virtual server report for only my low balance virtual servers, uh, which we've just worked with. I can press this button. You can't see it right now, but it opens up another screen on my screen. And I'll just switch you over to there. And boom, there we have a um, virtual server report with our company logo, uh, which could be anything. Um, so I hope that gives you some insight on what's possible. There's a lot possible with API. It's, it's truly awesome. Um, I would only suggest you to uh, just get going and uh, try it out. Um, so for now, I would like to give you some insights on how to proceed from here. Uh, so let's proceed with the actual slides again, back to the PowerPoint presentation. All right. I can imagine it's quite some information to process from here. So. I hope you are excited to get started on creating your own applications or scripts. And your question right now might be, how do I continue from here? So a great place to start is the Citrix reference documentation. I will provide the hyperlink to that in the slide deck and the slide deck will again be passed to you by Citrix. 
The reference documentation contains a lot of great information about how, setting, how to set things up and contains small code snippets for that. Also important, the sample folder. The SDK extract that we had to install the actual SDK for Python contains more files than just the installation. There's a sample folder in there and it contains some great demos on how to set certain scripts up. Um, Citrix made those for you, be sure to check them out, just open up these py files and uh, you'll be good to go in no time. Also, mickeyhorse.com, I like to blog about anything related to the ADC or Citrix, um, but uh, if you want to keep in touch regarding anything related to the Nitro API, uh, please do have a look. I'll be also be sh sure to uh, upload the files that we created today there, so you can have a commented version of that. Um, you can also always reach out to me on nickhillworst at gmail.com. Uh, I'll always be happy to help. Just reach out and, and get in touch. And I'm sure we'll figure out whatever is wrong or required. And I'll be happy to do so. All right. That was it for today. I hope you had a good time. I know I sure did. And I hope to see you next time.